I was mainly a Nintendo kid, but I was also a Final Fantasy kid. I remember during summer breaks, I would play Final Fantasy 3 on my Super Nintendo for hours. Now, Final Fantasy 3 is 6, but back then we couldn't just whip out an iPhone and learn random fun facts online. So when I heard about Final Fantasy 7 coming out on the PlayStation, it was a bit confusing for little me. But it said Final Fantasy and PlayStation on the box, so I had to have both. Santa pulled through, and I was hooked instantly. At the time, Final Fantasy 3 was more of my older brother's game. I played the heck out of it, but I guess the cartridge was technically his. Final Fantasy 7 was the first Final Fantasy that was mine. To go from the 2D world to this new 3D one was incredible. Yeah, the characters looked ridiculous, like what are these arms, but I remember being mind blown once I got to the overworld. It was huge, and it felt like anything could happen. But more than that, the music that played hit me hard. The main theme of Final Fantasy VII plays as you navigate the overworld, and hearing that magnificent music in the context of this amazing new world was one of the most pivotal moments of my musical development. At the time, I didn't make music. There was no music education where I went to school, so I just didn't. But I always felt connected to it. I never had exposure to instrumental music like this outside of video games, and this particular track is what threw me down the rabbit hole. Because the theme would stop playing once you entered a town or got into a random battle, I would literally just make Cloud stand in the overworld so I can keep listening. I cared about these characters and this adventure, and this theme, for reasons I couldn't explain, drew me closer to them and made me more able to connect with it all on a personal level. I was just growing up. I think every kid puts themselves into a different world, and that theme was my gateway into this one. Fast forward to today, and we have the Final Fantasy VII Remake for PS4. Well, the first part of what will be a multi-part retelling of the story, which covers the Midgar section of the game. In that section of the original, you didn't even get to the overworld. I was worried the main theme wouldn't be played in the new game as a result. But it's here, and it's glorious. It's high-quality orchestral goodness, and it changes things up a bit in terms of the arrangement. In this video, I want to explain why I think this remade version hits home for me. There's the obvious, of course, the main theme was a big part of my childhood, and here it is again in a new form. But I want to dig deeper. There are musical elements in this new arrangement that enhance that nostalgic feeling. Let's clarify what nostalgia is first. The term nostalgia was coined by a Swiss doctor in 1688, combining the Greek terms nostos, or homecoming, and algos, or pain or distress. The association with homesickness has been there since the beginning, but home can be a placeholder for any sort of past situation or comfort. Scientifically, we now understand the nostalgic experience as pleasurable neurochemicals working in combination with the prefrontal cortex, which makes us desire experiences we once had. But that occurs in tandem with knowing that those experiences are now just memories, ones that we can never fully replicate. All of that is to say that there is a combination of happiness and sadness that goes into the nostalgic experience. Studies have been conducted to try and explain music's impact on emotions. One study found that its participants, asked to rate their happiness and sadness levels after listening to music, reported higher happiness ratings for fast tempo and major key music, and higher sadness ratings for slow tempo and minor key music. Mixed emotional responses, which is what we're looking for here, were higher for music featuring both fast minor or slow major. The main theme is in a slow major, so we could check that box. Moreover, according to a different study, sadness is said to be musically accentuated by low energy. On the whole, the remake arrangement has a lot less simultaneous sound at any given point. I'm going to play a bit from the original and point out some things on screen I want you to pay attention to.
Now let's listen to the equivalent in the remake. Again, I'll put some info on the screen so you can really notice a few ways it's weakened. So, as you can see, everything's just down a notch. There's much less emphasis on epic, triumphant, bombastic sounds, and much more emphasis on the melody. The remake is just much more intimate through those moments, and it makes sense with the plot. We're just exploring Midgar here, and yes, I know it's huge now, but it's still just that one place, with a smaller cast of characters in the party. It's a vast expansion, but only of a tiny fragment of the tale. So intimacy makes sense. As a byproduct of the music reflecting this intimacy, our nostalgia is peaked for the reasons I've laid out. But let's go a bit further. There's another study that disputes that low energy concept I talked about earlier. Well, it kind of disputes it. This study says musical sadness is less about the energy levels and more about instruments imitating a sad voice, and having a slow onset of sound. But actually, the remake arrangement has both of those things too. You may have noticed that the remake arrangement is in a lower key than the original. And that key switch really helps give the melody a more human singing quality. Let's take a listen to the cello playing the main melody. This isn't an extreme note range for the cello, but it's a bit up there. Not so low that it sounds rumbly, and not so high that it sounds piercing but high enough that it's not very high on energy, and the notes could be sung by a tenor or alto singer. And the way it's played here, the player gives every note time to build up to its maximum loudness, so there's the slow onset of sound. I'll play this little excerpt. Notice how the cello always sounds a tiny bit behind the violin. This happens after we hear the melody just from the cello, so we've already established the human sing-song quality. It's subtle, but it's really effective. The new key also allows the flute to take on the melody in a semi-extreme range. Not super low, but it dips into the lower range of the instrument, which is usually divided into low, middle, and high this way. If there was a bit more going on around it, you wouldn't be able to hear it very much. You can also hear the breath in this recording, Low flute notes often have this characteristic breathy sound, making the instrument sound even more humanized. It's just beautiful to my ears. Musical nostalgia is also said to be brought on most often in solitary settings. And since both versions of Final Fantasy VII are single-player and contain dozens of hours of content, it's safe to say most of us played these games alone. Beyond the music itself, the entire Final Fantasy VII Remake experience harkens back to the old days for those who have played the original. RPGs in general often blur the lines between our own identities and the identities of the characters in the game. In the book My Avatar Myself, Zack Wagoner writes, If both types of stimuli are real, and it is the human mind processing and reflecting on stimuli, 
that makes them real for that individual's identities, and if a fantasy identity, such as a Morrowind avatar, triggers real emotions and sensations, then the binary real versus virtual that sets up fantasy identities as not real is inaccurate and in need of adjustment. So while you're your own person and RPG characters are characters, the decisions you make in these games connect the two. So yes, of course, you're playing as Cloud, but to an extent you're taking on that persona, mixing it with your own and manipulating in-game happenings through your own personal decisions. So to come back to being the character you were when you played the original as the person you are now is like a melding of who you were and who you are. We don't get many opportunities to do that through media, and with these masterful musical arrangements, it's really a nostalgic experience like I personally haven't felt with remakes of other forms of entertainment. So play on, bask in that nostalgia, and when it's over, just know we have more games coming. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Koopa Koopa.